Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Heinz History Center. As we approach Memorial Day weekend, we thought we would check in with our friend Andy Masick to learn all about a lot of the men and women from Pittsburgh that were instrumental in protecting our freedom and serving our country. Andy, thank you so much for having us. I'm morning. so glad that you're here because, you know, during World War II, uh, this region was the arsenal of democracy, but it was the people of this region that made it so great. And one of the innovations that came out of World War II that came from Western Pennsylvania is the Jeeps. The Jeep. Yeah, who knew? I, exactly. I feel like a lot of people don't know that. No, the War Department put out an RFP, a request for proposals, right before the war, and they said, we need a vehicle that will replace the horse on the battlefield. Mm -hmm. Has to go any place a horse can go, has to climb a 30 degree grade, uh, and it can't weigh any more than a big horse. Well, all the big car makers said, it can't be done. Yeah. But this little outfit up in Butler, Pennsylvania, the American Bantam Car Company, they had a little factory up there. There's and a they look said, at it, that little factory can do right it. there. And they did. They cranked out this Jeep. The government said, this is exactly what we're talking this is about. What we need. We need 300,000 of them. When can you deliver? Well, this little outfit up in Butler couldn't produce that kind of quantity. They had never made more than 500 vehicles in a year's time in the history of their company. Wow. So the government pulled the contract, gave it to uh, Willis Overland of Toledo, Ohio, and then Ford had to make more Jeeps for the war. But it all started right here in western Pennsylvania. You know, it's not just the Jeep that started here no, in western Pennsylvania. You also, know, the Tuskegee Airmen, which is something I feel like we hear a lot about, but maybe everyone doesn't know the details of the A history. lot of people don't know that at the beginning of World War II, there were only 124 black pilots in America, the whole country. Wow. Well, they trained Tuskegee Airmen, black uh, uh, young men, uh, most of them from Pittsburgh. Uh, Pittsburgh uh, area provided more of these fighter pilots and medium bomber pilots than any other part of the country. They were brilliant. They trained a thousand of them and it was a game changer. These guys won more unit citations than anyone and 84 of them were killed in action. 84 of the 992 Tuskegee Airmen were killed in action. They were heroic but they were also pace setters. They, they were the ones who led the way. The double V campaign, victory in Europe and victory at home too for African Americans. Also, we well, can do it. We I mean. can do it here in <laughs> Western Pennsylvania. And in 1943, a Westinghouse artist named J. Howard Miller came up with this poster showing a Westinghouse woman war worker making a muscle and saying, we can do it. Well, 50,000 women took the place of men in the factories in Pittsburgh and Pennsylvania. Right, we needed people to get back to work. That's Who's gonna right. do it? The women are gonna do it. The women did it. And, you know, everybody pitched in. The kids were picking up scrap metal. Uh, there were victory gardens being planted to supplement the food supply. But these women who, well, they didn't call them Rosie the Riveter at first. Oh. No, they just called them women war workers. Yeah. But a song came out in 1943. All the day long, whether rain or shine, she's a part of the assembly line. She's making history, working for victory. <laughs> Rosie <laughs> the Riveter. <laughs> well, the we people of America that. heard that song and they said, you know what, that's Rosie the Riveter. So it was serendipitous that the song and the poster came out at the same came time. together. Well, you can learn about this and so much more at the History Center. Thank you so much, Andy. We really appreciate you. And we thank you so much for celebrating and honoring the men and women who have served our country, especially ones from Pittsburgh. I think that's the right way to think of it, honoring the men and women who've served. Yes, amen. Thanks so much. Guys, what did you think? We need to work on our Rosie the Riveter song. I haven't really practiced that one yet. <laughs> no, I thought that was it good. It was good, yeah. I can yeah, always count on it. Andy to break out into song and dance. I know. We were hoping he would sing the Rosie the Riveter <laughs> yeah. song. And he did. We love that. We also we love got it. his Your passion came true. for the history. Like, really, mm -hmm. it makes all of us excited and to learn the Pittsburgh connections. Thanks, Katie. Thanks, Katie.